this gear review is going to be about this Manfrotto action tripod. I've had it for about six years, give or take, five, six years, and it's great for compact cameras, uh, real small bridge cameras. It's amazing for GoPros and time lapses, landscape time lapses with a GoPro, but uh, I, I definitely would not uh, recommend anybody use this tripod for a DSLR, even an entry level two, three, four hundred dollar DSLR. I would not use it for even a small Sony mirrorless like an A6000 series. Probably wouldn't use it for that, mostly because uh, the camera bodies on A6000s are so small, and the lenses you're going to put on them are so much bigger once you get a, a good lens, not necessarily the kit lens. But you're going to have a lot of weight on the front of the camera, and a lot of those lenses you're going to use don't have a tripod foot, so you're going to have a lot of weight on a very small area. And these are not stable at all, so if they're wobbling around, it's probably not going to be good for your camera body. Entry level DSLRs, because they're so chonky. And then even if you have a higher end lens, like this 70-200 to VR2 that has the uh, lens foot on it, and this is my F100, which it's, it's a pretty good stand-in for a regular middle-of-the-line DSLR when it comes to weight. When you put it on here, it's incredibly unstable. And it only has one point of contact to control itself, which is these little super expensive Manfrotto buttons. It has a little piece of rubber on the bottom, so whenever you screw it into your camera, it doesn't, uh, doesn't mar up anything, which is, which is nice. And another thing is, don't lose these buttons. They are expensive. I think they're on Amazon for $30 or $40 just for three. So whenever you're done with the tripod, I always take the button off, put it in the top, close this clamp so that it can't fall out accidentally. Between three and four pounds set up right here. Nothing too crazy. I'd say closer to three pounds. And this tripod is only rated for 3.3 pounds or 1.5 kilograms at 61 inches in height. Needless to say, I personally think they put a max weight on there to make it look good on paper even though it's so small and I would not trust it with 3 pounds. Rarely if ever would I use it with this. Put it on there clamp it down, and when it's flat, it, it's just fine, it's not that bad, but as soon as you start moving it around, it vibrates like crazy. It's almost like it's, almost like it's on jello, so that's one reason why I wouldn't use it for heavier equipment, or even any entry level DSLR. But as soon as you pan down, I don't want it to fall and break, as soon as you pan down a little bit, It'll, it'll just fall itself. And even if you clamp it down as far as you can, it won't, uh, it won't hold it. It'll just keep falling down. And then the same is true on the back side. It'll just fall backwards. So, one reason, another reason why I would not go with it. It gives people the false sense that it's plenty tall enough so you can stand here and look through it without any problem which is about eye level for me and I'm about six foot tall give or take so it probably goes up to about I'd say five seven five eight but even then with it all the way up it's very very wobbly and I wouldn't trust that with any wind any time lapse any long exposure landscapes that require long, longer shutter speeds in your focal length it just defeats the purpose because if you need a tripod to take a photo usually it's because the shutter is too slow for hand holding so with this you pretty much are required to shoot above your focal length to get a stable image unless you have really good image stabilization in IVIS but at that point if you own a camera that has IVIS you're probably not buying a $60 tripod from Amazon another issue that I have is uh, you can't remove this tripod head at all. You're kind of stuck with it. So if it, this tripod head breaks, you gotta basically buy a whole new tripod. Which is fine, because hopefully by then you're ready to upgrade. 
or find something a little bit better in the $100 to $200 range. And for example, if you have a tripod that has interchangeable heads on it, you can uh, get this, this tripod head off Amazon. It is a Pergear TH3 Pro, and it's about 20 25 bucks. Personally, it is the best bang for buck ball head you can get. I've had it for about a year. I've done five to ten minute exposures on it for one shot. I think it's great for the money. It's not as not as good as the higher end like Benros, Manfrotto's, or anything else really, but it's a tool and it does its job well enough. It doesn't take very long to do it. It is very quick. Mostly because these switches and when it's fully done it's about the size of my forearm give or take so it's not it's not huge it is pretty light so you can you can hold it with one finger no problem but uh, if you're traveling with this and you're going through an airport like TSA and you have the straps to the outside of your bag I would be a little leery about that because when you're traveling it's already stressful enough you have expensive gear in your bag. TSA doesn't always understand how expensive the gear is. And I've, I've always had good experiences, but I have hor heard horror stories. But uh, this does kind of look like a gun handle, so if it's sticking out of your backpack, a TSA agent might uh, give you a little hard time, or security, or just a, a random bystander might be a little curious about it. That's, that's really about it, but uh, like I said earlier, it's amazing for GoPros and whatnot. I use it for my GoPro all the time. But uh, other than that, I probably wouldn't recommend this to anybody that has any kind of camera that has detachable lenses. So, hopefully you found this useful. I'll put a link in the description for this exact tripod. So if you're interested for cell phones, compact cameras, GoPros, etc., uh, you can look into it. But other than that, it's not bad. Thank you.